Hey guys, and we're back. You're like, what happened? Carson was just talking about something very interesting. Well, he's going to continue talking about this. That sounds too bad. Let me start over. <laughs> all right, the camera's good. We're going to be sitting down. Justice, I need you to get all your shit together <laughs> and take it down to the shit store. I want it out of here. <laughs> okay, I'll take, I'll get my shit together finally. That's what you sound like my dad, Carson. You sound like my dad. <laughs> Hey guys, Justice Curry here. I have an exciting, amazing G.I. Joe filled episode for you. Behind me, yes, behind me, you're scratching your head going, what is he talking about behind you? Is a special guest I had to beg and plead for many months, signed waivers, liabilities, but behind me right now is my good friend, Carson. How you doing, Carson? Yo, Joe. Yeah, that's right. Thank you again, and, and Carson, uh, why I want to talk with him is he's not only a G.I. Joe enthusiast, he's also the creator of a G.I. Joe website that I use, that all my friends use, called 3D Joes, and that's kind of going to be the focus of our interview or talking. I'm going to overlay a lot of uh, the website, his books, his projects, and show you what it looks like. You guys are going to freaking, it's going to blow your mind. but. I, you're you're already thinking justice. Be quiet. Let Carson talk. So, <laughs> hi, how you doing, dude? How are you? Hey, I'm good, man. I'm good. Thanks for having me on. It's been a long time coming. I think uh, we've been talking for what three or four years. Yeah. The first, the first time you got in touch with me, you were like, "Hey, man, I like your website. I've got this sealed train set from Tyco. Yes. Would you?" Would you want to open it and document it for 3D Joe's? And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Of course I do. Yeah. Um, so you just mailed that to me, man. So you made a great first impression because, I mean, you just came right in. You saw something that I didn't have on the site yet. Yep. You sent it to me to open it, which was amazing. Uh, we met, That's actually one of my most popular YouTube videos is me and my buddy Joe Goldston opening that train. Yeah. It was a ton of fun. We, just, we had a couple beers. Um, <laughs> I remember they didn't include the parachutes in the train set that were supposed to come with it. They put this little stupid note in there that said, oops, uh, we're out of parachutes. Call this number and we'll give you your parachutes. So we called that number like 30 years later. It was a fun video, man, but you made a great impression right out of the gate because you wanted to help me build the site. And I'm just, I couldn't do most of the stuff that I do with 3D Joe's. I can't afford to buy and own everything. Like I've got every right. figure from 82 to 94 and I've got most of the vehicles, but I've had so many people, just a laundry list of people help me out over the last six years of, of building it. And I think everybody understands for me to build a high quality archive, I have to have everything in my hands and yep. kind of do the work personally. Um, because I trained as a graphic designer at North Carolina State University College of Design. And I've been doing video and animation for 18 years now. So if I can get that stuff in my hands and document it myself, I can hold it to a very high standard of documentation. Absolutely. And I think, you know, people like you and Paige Wagner and uh, Yojo Outlet, uh, Chris Cooper, Kyle Cooper, um, so many people. I don't want to, I'm going to forget people, man. <laughs> there's, been, there's been a laundry list of people that have helped me out by mailing me stuff. My buddy Tim is like a paperwork guru. Right. He just sent me folders and folders and folders of paperwork and that's one of the ways we got the uh, catalogs and offers archive really complete so yeah I'm, I couldn't be more proud of um, what we've accomplished with 3D Joe's we're coming up on 5 million page views Woo! 5 million page views and people might be scratching their head going well what are you talking about what is 3D Joe's you're mentioning archives and, and yeah. train sets and stuff and I'll put a link in my description of that YouTube video where he opens that sealed train set that I sent him, and I'll probably at the end of it, after I sign some more waivers and liabilities, uh, steal some of that content and put it at the end of this very video. But if you wanna watch the full video yourself, I'll put a link. Um, hey, please do, man. Take all the clips you want from that video. It was a ton of fun and we couldn't have done it without you, man. Awesome. So, um, but yeah, so 3D Joe's, it started with a simple premise. Um, Yojo's been there for 20 years and I love Yojo and I use Yojo and 3D Joe's is not a replacement for Yojo so I like to say that right up front. What 3D Joe's is, is a little bit of a deeper dive into just 1982 to 1994, a real American hero. Yep. And so it's every, 
figure, every vehicle, every playset, every catalog, every book, every magazine, every puzzle. I just got done with lunch boxes. Uh, I spent three weeks building the lunchbox pages. There's 11 pages, 100 plus photos, um, maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 plus of spins. These are uh, interactive 360 photography. Yep. Uh, we're powered by a company called Arc Spin. I backed their Kickstarter back in 2012. I was their first case study um, as like a customer testimonial case study. Wow. Kind of three to two of us. Um, I think I've posted somewhere in the neighborhood of 3,000 of these interactive spins now <laughs> on the site. I've got about 500 pages. Um, actually, there's there's over 500 figures. I've got at least 600, 650 unique pages on 3D Joe's. Yep. And, and several thousand spins included there. God knows how many photos. But uh, so it just started out as an archive. I wanted it to be mobile friendly. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to not have any ads. I didn't want any clutter. I wanted, you know, either figures that are 360s that you can spin, yep. or the card art with the figure on the bubble, or the back of the card and a close up of the file card. Like, just keep it simple. Right. So that people can look at it on their iPhones, because 60% of web traffic is coming through smart devices these mm -hmm. days. So I wanted people to have a mobile friendly experience be able to look at the sculpt, be able to look at the card art, be able to read the file card, mm -hmm. and, and keep browsing. So, so Yoto goes deeper on things like, this mold was used for this figure, and this repurposes this, and, and there was 87 versions of Snake Eyes on the <laughs> file. Like, we're doing amazing documenting that level of detail. Yep. That's not what I strive to do, right? Like, I, I strive to, you know, honor and respect and, and preserve and uh, present the sculpting, that's number one, right? Yep. The, the yep. way that they design these figures and vehicles with the incredible amount of detail, awesome paint apps. So I want to put that first and foremost. And then I want to get into the art, the, the card art, the box art, what have you. Yeah. Um, and then we get into you know the file card for the figures or the uh, file card for the driver, if there's a driver and a spin of the driver. And you get and what we started doing maybe three years ago, we started 3D Joe's six, six years ago, it's, today, it's 2019 right now, if you're watching this 30 years from now. That's right. So, you know, the Kickstarter came through in 2012. So actually, I guess I'm coming up on seven years. Um, yeah, it was uh, JoeCon 2012 in New Orleans was my first JoeCon. And right when I came back from that, I started building 3D Joes. But so what we started adding to the vehicle archive is, is a photo gallery that shows every feature of that vehicle. So if there's like a missile bay that raises, we'll have a photo with it down and we'll have a photo with it up and we'll describe how that, like how much um, articulation does that have? Does it go 45 degrees, does it go 90 degrees, or we go 180 back and forth, whatever. So we just go into the very intricate details of, of these toys that they design. Yep. And um, you know, I'm close. I've finished every figure 82 to 94, and I've finished every vehicle page 82 to 94, but I'm still building out like the 360 spins yep. and the backs of the boxes and that kind of stuff for the vehicles 90 to 94. So 90 to 94 vehicles are in progress right now, and I own all of them. It's just a matter of taking the time and doing it, man, because it's incredibly time intensive. Yep, yep. And I, and I remember uh, another one of the things that you started offering uh, years ago was some of the actual artwork. So you had the flag box that you uh, scanned, you know, enhanced it, just fine tuned it and it looked beautiful. And then you were selling posters and it wasn't for financial gain. It was, hey, this website costs time and you know, my time is valuable. And I, I remember you saying something funny a while back, like, hey, if I calculated how much I make an hour, it's, you know, like, 23 cents or something like that with the amount of time and dedication yeah. you put behind it it's it's phenomenal you know i certainly don't pitch it that way to my fiance <laughs> <laughs> i don't want her to know how little i make <laughs> right but yeah no so i was doing the site and the arc spin 360 uh software cost 80 dollars a month for yep. that subscription so there was a real expense there you multiply that by 12 and you got some real money oh. um and, and then there's obviously hosting and stuff like that that comes along with the website so yeah, there were some expenses there. And, and like I said earlier, the mission was to create a very like minimal, mobile friendly, like just present content and not be bogged down with ads. Yep. But that meant challenges. That meant that the 5 million page views that I've gotten, I haven't earned a nickel <laughs> off of it. Right? Oh. So I had to find another way to offset the expenses. And so the initial idea was once I finished the figures 1982 to 1989, I made this one poster that showed every figure from 82 to 89. It's called 3 Joes of the 80s. And, uh, and that was a success. I put that on my credit card, man. It was like 35, it was like 30. And we're back. Carson was just talking about a very uh, 
horrible joke, so I had to edit that out. I'm ashamed of you, Carson. I can't believe we're bringing <laughs> politics and uh, gun control into this conversation. Totally kidding. Um, we're having a fun conversation. We last left off with uh, the posters, your original poster, and kind of yeah, what, what was that? The whole thing. You had all the card art, is what I believe. Yeah. Eighty-two. Well, no, actually, the first one was actually just the loose figures. Um, so it was just on a white background. Um, you can see it if you go to the posters page. It's 3D Joe's of the '80s. It's every loose figure from 1982 to 1989. I think it's, oh man, is it 241 figures, something to that extent? Everything from 1982 to 1989. Um, because, you know, I had to figure out a way to recoup the cost of the uh, $80 a month ARC spin subscription and the hosting and everything. And uh, so I put that poster on my credit card, just kind of gambled, you know, it was like 3,500 bucks. And uh, it, it took me about, yeah, because everything I do is offset lithograph professional industrial prints, you know, really high quality stuff yep. um, on, on 60 pound paper for the posters. Uh, the smaller ones I've done are on 80 pound paper because that's about as thick as you can get it and still roll it without getting creasing and everything. Right. So, um, so yeah, I, I just kind of took a shot at seeing if I could make some income off of that one poster because I didn't want to run ads on the site. Yep. And it, it, it went great. Like after three months, I was, I was in the clear and I was like, okay, what am I going to do next? Of course, I had kept building the site at that time, and by that time, I was getting ready to get done with the 1990 to 1994 figures on 3D Joe's. And so a natural progression from there was to do 3D Joe's in the 90s, which is the rest of the figures. Um, so once I was done with that, you know, I had really always, since I was a kid, been incredibly passionate about the packaging artwork of G.I. Joe and Real American Hero. Yep. It's the only line that I've ever seen that invested in a completely unique painting for every figure, every vehicle, every playset, every single major product had a completely original painting. And I don't believe any other line did that uh, to that extent. And so Hasbro invested a tremendous amount of money and resources in creating this package. And now a word from our sponsors. The day is finally here. Plastic Crack is available on Amazon Prime. If you don't know what Plastic Crack is, then you need to check it out. It is a documentary, not a boring documentary, an exciting documentary about toys, the collectors, the community, the, co the collections, us. My friends are in it. People all around the world are in it. You're going to love it. Check out Plastic Crack. There'll be a link in my description. Um, uh, direct link to Amazon Prime or just type in plastic crack in your search menu bar thingamabobber. Love y'all. Take care. Bye. As yet. Please stand by for further details. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. And I was always very passionate about that. So I got the idea of what if I did the card art. And so I just started laying it out in Photoshop to see what would work. And it just so happened that the first four years worth of cards were 49 cards. And I could lay it out seven across by seven tall, and it would fit perfectly on a 24 by 36 poster. So that was just, it was a no brainer at that point, man. So I did that one and everybody loved it. Yep. Uh, so then I got to my first Kickstarter. Up till then I was putting everything on credit cards. Um, I just bought my, my first house uh, back in, I think this was 2013. Yep. And uh, I didn't want to keep putting stuff on credit cards. So I did my first Kickstarter and raised 11 grand. And so at 11 grand, I was able to print three poster ideas that I had. Yep. Um, and so I just immediately did that and shipped that. And uh, people love the poster series, but they started saying, hey, look, man, I love what you're doing, but I'm running out of wall space. Why don't you, why don't you do books? And coincidentally, I had already traveled up to Rhode Island at that point and done audio interviews with Ron Rudat, um, yep. who everybody knows now as the figure designer from 1982 to 1986. Uh, did an interview with Kirk Bazigian, who was the brand manager from 82 to 86. Right. And then again from 90 to 94. He wasn't brand manager 90 to 94. He was elevated to vice president of Boys Toys. And Vinny Delivia was a uh, brand manager from 90 to 94. But I'd gone up and sat with Kirk. And, uh, and I also sat with Guy Cassidy, who designed the X30 that I got for Christmas in 86. Designed the mobile command center, which I got uh, for Christmas in 87. And his like, likeness is cross country, right? It's, yeah, that's right. That's right. So 1986 cross country was his likeness. Although he'll tell you that figure doesn't look a lot like him. He <laughs> thinks they got he thinks they got the likeness a little better on the second version mm. that has the whitewashed jeans with the Confederate flag on the back. Right. Um, so he he thinks he looks a little more like that second one. But anyway, I, I this was like the trip of a lifetime. And the reason the trip happened actually. So now that I think about it, 
with the first Kickstarter, when I printed those three posters, one of the ideas that I got for what was a perk that I could offer that would get people behind this Kickstarter was doing a signature series where I, where I would have these creators sign these posters. Oh. And so to do that, I physically drove these posters to Virginia to get uh, Larry Hama to sign Tunnel Rat. Uh, and I drove to Rhode Island to get Kirk Bazigian to sign Law. Yep. And got uh, Ron Rudat to sign Leatherneck because each one of those is, is visually based on those creators. Yep. And so that was the signature series on my first poster uh, Kickstarter. So while I was there, I wasn't just going to go get some signatures and not document anything for posterity. Mm -hmm. And I do video for a living. So that's when I was like, okay, I'm not going to roll up in their place with a bunch of cameras <laughs> and make them uncomfortable, but I am going to bring my wireless audio, my recorder, and get really good high quality audio and just sit there and talk to them for hours. And they ate it up, man. They loved it. Oh, uh, so when you go to 3 Joe's, there's a creators tab. Mm -hmm. And then under there, you'll see Ron Rudet and Kirk Gazigian's page. Uh, Guy Cassidy's page is still coming. I've got to finish the vehicle documentation before I can finish his up. Because yep. he gets as late as the general. That was his too from 1990. So um, from there, I had a library of kind of information to pull from, stories to pull from. And I felt like I was starting to find my voice in the hobby. Mm -hmm. um, before with 3D Joe's, I liked documenting the stuff, but it wasn't a very verbose um, endeavor, right? I didn't try to put a lot of my own voice into this stuff. Yep. But with, with years of doing it and starting to talk to these people and really learning the content, I felt like when, when people started asking me after I was six posters in, why don't you do books? I was like, you know what? There's a need for this in the marketplace. Absolutely. There are hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of people like me that love that card art, like that yep. Lieutenant Falcon right there, uh, you know, that would love to know who created that? How, what was the process? And so I, I befriended the packaging guy that did packaging for G.I. Joe from 1969 to 1989. Uh, this gentleman's name is Ed Morrill, and uh, he ran the packaging company. His name was on the company. Um, he was the one that hired some of the guys from the 70s for the 12-inch uh, uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. He uh, worked with them through the 8-inch stuff in the late 70s. And then he was there from the get-go uh, in 82, 81, doing development. His packaging company designed the G.I. Joe logo that's on all the cards from 82 oh, to 85. Wow. And then the new logo that was there from 86 to 89. Yep. So this guy was in, I, I can't state, understate how impactful this guy was. Like it's it's incredible. He did all the thumbnail sketches yep. for every, every single card art, every single figure. He did thumbnail sketches to make sure that when you looked at that line on the wall, everyone had a unique pose and showed off their accessories in the best way, oh. that kind of thing. And then he kicked it over to Hector Garrido, who was the contracting painter that he hired. Mm -hmm. So he had just an incredible amount of impact on, on this line. And then after 89, Hasbro moved that work back in house. Yep. So that that's when they started working with guys like Doug Hart, who was an internal illustrator, uh, who had the great fortune of meeting uh, thanks to Daryl the Priest at Hascon in 2017. Uh, Daryl did a great job of getting these legends together. So his 24 previous employees of the of the G.I. Joe brand that worked on the G.I. Joe brand, Hasbro employees that worked on the G.I. Joe brand. And, um, you know, that was a tremendous trip, a tremendous opportunity. I learned so much from Doug. Uh, I, sat, I sat there and just talked to him for hours at the booth. And uh, we were able to solve some real mysteries. Like, there was this giant painting that was a collage that they made. Uh, a mural puzzle out of in 1990 in Europe, and then it came out as a 1991, and then it came out again in 1992 as a Greek candle box. And uh, and I found out that Doug Hart painted this internally at Hasbro in 1990. It's by far the best 1990 painting that just kind of shows everything that was going on in 1990. Yeah. And it never it never was released in the states. And I wouldn't have put two and two together if I didn't go to Hascon, meet Doug Hart, start talking to him about his work. And he mentioned that he painted that thing. It took him two months. Oh. Um, and so he was kind of like just telling me how he belabored over this thing. Yeah. And I was like, wait, that's nothing we ever received in the United States. And I started just tapping my memory banks. And I had just gotten that Greek candle box. And, you know, it's just amazing connecting these dots, becoming kind of somewhat of an archivist and, you know, trying to preserve and, and, and present something to people. It's been really, really re rewarding and just like continuously fun. I mean, I've been doing this nonstop for six years now and I've, I never get tired of it, man. No, it's gotta be so exciting. And you know, a lot of people wanna meet celebrities, you know, Ben Affleck and 
and Brad Pitt and all these people, but those, the designers, are our celebrities. I mean, you had to be a little bit starstruck in the beginning of going, oh my God, I am talking to the person that's contributed to my childhood and, and a piece of who I am as a man right now. It, it's yep. probably a, a really cool Absolutely. part. Absolutely, you're absolutely right, dude. There is no, there's no way of explaining the kind of nostalgic rush, the endorphins that are flowing through you. Literally, that trip when I took the posters up to get them signed in Rhode Island, it was three days, and it was back to back to back, just oh. amazing experiences. Where you know Guy Cassidy, Ron Rudat, and Kirk Bazigan all invited me into their homes, all spent hours with me when I didn't know if I was going to be there for 30 minutes or maybe an hour. Yep. Um, I, Guy Cassidy had an appointment at one. Mm -hmm. I think I went to his house at. Uh, nine nine or ten a.m and i stayed until like 12 you know like until he just absolutely had to go yeah um and we, we could have sat and talked for a long time beyond that then i went to ron's house i think i had to be there at like three or four yeah i ended up sitting upstairs with him in his studio while he's flipping through these just boxes oh. and boxes of drawings and uh and we're sitting there for three or four hours and then he's like, well, it's time for dinner. Would you like to join us? I'm like, hell yeah. So his son, Tristan, came over. We yep. sat there and had dinner. It was amazing. And then we went back upstairs and kept talking. Man. Oh, that, that's so cool. All night. Yep. And, and, and then the next day was a Sunday, and the uh, the Patriots were playing and the Panthers were playing, both at 1 o'clock. I'm a Panthers fan. <laughs> Kirk is the Patriots fan. Yep. So we sat there. We went downstairs, recorded for two, three hours, came up, watched football, uh, oh. Then went back downstairs, recorded for two or three more hours, and then went up and had dinner with his family. His two daughters came oh. over. It was amazing, man. Just, just really like top five memories of all time, man. Because yeah. coming out of there, coming out of there, not only did I know so much more about the brand, but I made three friendships. Like wow. I really, I really like those guys. Kirk has gone on to write the forwards for all my books. Yep. Uh, Guy Cassidy and I talk regularly on Facebook. Uh, Ron Rudat is, I consider him just a good friend now. Um, we, Dan Klingensmith and I, brought him down to JoeCon two years ago because the club didn't want to pay for him or whatever. Uh, so we got him a plane, we got him a, a condo to stay in, and him and his son came down and we hung out all weekend. Oh, like, wow. They're, they're going to be lifelong friendships, and I'm incredibly grateful. That's more valuable than anything. Ab right? Absolutely. Um, beyond just like being blown away that. I'm talking to the guy that designed all these figures that I obsessed about when I was a kid. <laughs> like, I got a good friend out of this. Like, yep. He's a great friend. No, so. that, that's great. And, and you mentioned the audio clips that are accessible on your website, 3D Joe's. And I've, yep. I've clicked through a few um, over the years myself. And, and I think he'll talk about, it, like Ron will talk about the inspiration be, behind each character. Am I mistaken yep. on that? Like, you can click on Baroness and he'll have a yep. little, or Sergeant Slaughter and he'll talk about Sergeant Slaughter or whatnot. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, so if you go to the Creators tab and then click on Ron Rudat and then scroll towards the bottom, yep. you'll see a bunch of little spins of the figures and then you'll see little audio clips underneath those that speak to each one of those figures. Um, there's also like more topical kinds of things like what was your process like for designing figures and then you'll get like a four or five minute clip on that. Um, and then like Ron Rudat did a bunch of the patch design, the little uh, logos and patches and insignias and everything. Yep. So there's a clip, there's a clip of a few minutes where we're just talking about that. Like, what was his process like for creating those? Nice. So it's, I mean, to me, 3D Joe's is, it's a lifelong project. It's six years in the running, but I'm never going to stop. You know what I mean? I, I just got done doing all the lunch boxes in the last few weeks. Uh, there's 10 different lunch boxes with three different variations that I've been able to find. Yep. And I mean, we're talking like weeks worth of work, man, just to get that done and get it documented for everybody. So yep. I hope people are enjoying it and learning and if I'm ever missing something, like if you look at the Lunchboxes page and you're like, oh, well, you missed this variant, reach out and tell me that, you know, yeah. because I want, it, I want it to be a complete resource. Absolutely. So there's, there's Twitter and Facebook links at the top right corner of 3D Joe's. I talk to people through there all the time. Good, good. And I want to, that's a good segue. You mentioned, I, I, of course, I'm looking, losing it. Your book, which I was just yeah. holding two seconds ago. Um, yeah. Oh, here Shiny it is. and yellow. Yeah. Um, so his book that's available, there's multiple copies. This is, uh, let's see, volume six. This is the latest version, I'm assuming. The latest version is volume six. Yeah, that's and the final volume. 
That's, oh. the, that's the last one because uh, you contributed something for that. There was the Nordic Outback where they had edited Outback's rifle out of the picture. Um, so that basically what I did was document every single piece of G.I. Joe, a real American hero, United States painted artwork, right? Because G.I. Joe was licensed all over the world to, do, to a more than a dozen companies. So what I did was in 78 pages of each volume, I documented a couple years at a time. So volume one is 82, 83, volume two is 83, uh, 84, 85, then 86, 87, then 88, 89, then 90, 91, 92 are, is volume five. And then what you're holding is volume six, which is 93, 94. But I had an extra 18 pages left over on volume six. So I took what I call the GI Joe world tour and I showed people all the different countries that G.I. Joe was made in, and then I showed unique paintings that were created in those countries for those products, because oftentimes they created their own characters, they created their own storylines. Um, for some reason, in Europe, they repainted a ton of the vehicle boxes. I think it's because they might have had some legislation that said that the vehicle illustrations had to be much more accurate to the actual toy. Yep. Um, it, seemed, it seems like the revised paintings for the European vehicles are more uh, stringent about representing the actual plastic toy that's in that box. So anyway, um, it's a six volume set. This is the box right here. This is a giant collage. This is every, this features painted artwork from every major illustrator uh, that contributed artwork to the brand from 82 to 94. So that's just a giant collage image. Wow. Inside that box is another box, and this is the To the Rescue box, uh, To the Rescue painting that was part of the uh, mail order poster set yep. that was from 1982, and so that's a favorite for me. Uh, my dad's a Green Beret, so I put uh, Lieutenant Falcon right there. A little shout out to my pops. Heck yeah. But anyway, um, then you just you know turn it over, pull these books out, and there's six books that fit in there. So uh, I printed a thousand copies of these. Yep. And I'm happy to report there's like 25 sets left. Woo! Like, oh, man. I'm almost filled out. That's awesome. That is really yeah. cool. So what happens when those, say people watch this and they go, hey, I'm going to go on 3D Joe's right now. In 25, boop, they disappear. What happens? Go ahead, uh, go ahead and get them because this is almost gone. And I'll tell you, and I'm not, there is no pulling punches here. This will not be made again. Oh, but wow. This slip case cost me seventeen thousand dollars, and oh. each sing each single copy of this book cost around ten thousand dollars. Yep. Right. Yep. So if you think about oh, there's six books in there in a slip case, that's seventy-seven thousand dollars worth of printing cost. That's just the printing cost. That's not happening again. Yep. I, I won't be able to I won't be able to raise that much money via Kickstarter to reproduce something that I've already produced, so that I can print more of these, so that I can keep selling it. Yep. So that. That does bother me because you know we've done thousands of hours worth of work to compile photoshop restore everything and do the research and, and make books out of these so i don't want that to be lost i mean obviously they'll still be available on itunes and amazon so yep. they'll never go away digitally but i would like for people to still have the availability to own a physical product mm -hmm. that, that had all that artwork the reason that i went with the uh single issues was because of price Right? The, yep. For the first one, I needed to raise like 10 grand just so I could print this one thing, right? <laughs> and, and it's, you know, it's a book, but it's not like a giant hardcover that would have cost 70 grand to print, right? Yep. So I had to do it incrementally. Um, after I got done with all six issues, the last Kickstarter went gangbusters. I had extra money. And so that's why I did the uh, slip case. Uh -huh. I think I raised $47,000 and I spent 58. Man. Um, actually getting this stuff made. Yep. But I made that money back uh, selling the leftovers, right? The extra inventory. So everything worked out. But I don't want it to be out of print, essentially. So what I'm thinking now is that I'm going to take all 450 pages. That Justice Curry here in mini Justice Curry. How you doing? Good. Good. What are we doing? We're going to do what? Some yep, we're going to race them and see who wins. The big guy or the little guy? Which one do you want to be? Okay, let's put the pe people in there, okay? All right, let's get the top off here. That is Frostbite. He's driving. All right, put the lid on. Oh, let's put this in.
on. Yeah. Let's watch it go down. Failed test. That are in here, and then add content to that. Uh, number one, Chad Huckle and I did all the Photoshop work together. Yep. We got better as we went on. Mm -hmm. So when I look at volumes one and two now, I'm a little less than content with the level of uh, restoration and documentation. Mm -hmm. So we're actually already knee deep in redoing everything from 1982 to 1985 because we're crazy. <laughs> you, you're, it seems like you're a perfectionist, which is awesome when, yeah. when it's, you know, restoring this and, and the, this is going to live on, you know, and yeah. guys are loving it. It's a great source of information. I've watched, you've done some live uh, Facebook uh, mm -hmm. videos and some of the big Facebook groups like ARAH 1982 to 1994 where you yeah. put your computer screen, your editing process of yeah. how you restore it. I mean, it is a time time consuming it's not just cut and paste and voila you are just meticulously going through that because you have a, a passion for it this is not a money-making yeah. scheme this is you this is a part of you that you want to share with the world and it's so fantastic i i love it and it, it shows in your website and if you're not on 3d joe's right now you gotta go check right, finish this finish this first this fun yeah. conversation then go on and you'll get lost. You'll literally go on 3D Joe's and five hours will go by and you go, oh my God, what, what happened? Because it's just an endless labyrinth of content and it's not confusing. It's very professional as you've already seen because I'm, I'm splicing in some stuff. But there is so much quality awesomeness just packed in there. I really, really just want everybody to explore the tabs. Like get in there and see what's in there because it's crazy. Like if you go under print, and then you go to books and you click on the books archive, literally every book is documented in there. It'll take you to an overview page and then you can click in on one book. For example, go into that book, you'll have a scan of every single page of, that, of these illustrated books and then you'll have a rip of the record or the cassette that was included with it. So you can hit play on the audio and you can flip through the pages and listen to the audio from the from the uh, cassette or the record. like. We've just been chipping away at this thing for six years, just continuously adding, like I was saying, it's all free, the website's all free, man. We don't do anything, we don't run ads on it. Yep. Um, it's it's just out there for the love of the brand, man, to try to keep this thing alive and help people reconnect with something that was really special to them. And, and it's just been a ton of fun for me. So I appreciate hearing people like you that get in that wormhole and just go digging, man, because oh, it, I love it is. It tremendous amount of content there and and like you just mentioned audio i remember going i never owned listen and fun tripwire as a kid and it came yep. with that little uh cassette tape and somehow yep. you you got the audio i'm going oh i can finally <laughs> listen to what was on that tape because i have it mint on card and obviously yep. i'm not gonna rip it open find some uh you know tape deck and listen to it and it's yep. just it's sweet it's it's so awesome but what i'm curious is what's next so you got your 82 through 94. I'm guessing it's merchandise, because that seems like an endless rabbit hole. Right, so I just did the uh, lunch boxes, right? So yep. there was 10 different lunch boxes with three variants on top, of the, on top of that, so 13 lunch boxes to document. The challenge is I want to have everything of one category before I start documenting it, oh. right? Because when I do it, I want it to be complete. So the lunch boxes, I've been collecting those for two years. Yep. Um, and I thought I was complete like a year ago, and then my buddy uh, from Declassified was like, well, do you have the 1988 Tiger Force red box variant? I'm like, son of a bitch! <laughs> so now I gotta find that one stupid lunch box so that I can feel complete so yep. that I can like do that documentation. So that's the challenge really is, is trying to make sure that I have one of every specimen yep. so that when I create this section on 3D Joe's, it's not incomplete.
so that's a challenge. Um, but what I'm doing right now is working my way through the 1990 to 1994 vehicles. Mm -hmm. I've created pages for each of those. I've added the front of the box and I've added the blueprints and the instructions and the drivers and their file cards. But what I've still got to do is do all the 360 spins for most of those vehicles and then do the detailed photo galleries that show off all the play features and sculpt details and that kind of stuff for those vehicles. So really just working my way through the vehicles is going to keep me busy for quite a while longer. Gotcha. Uh, in addition to that, to your point, there's endless merchandise to dig into. License license merchandise by G.I. Joe Real American Hero is insane. Yep. It's such a such a big one. So I think there's merchandise. Um, merchandise would probably be the next logical area. You know, everybody always asks me, hey man, are you gonna keep going with 97 and up? And honestly, I don't think I am. No. Because number one, the packaging art is garbage. Yep. <laughs> yeah. From the packaging art for 97, I've got all the 97, 98 stuff. It's just not good. <laughs> um, I love the figures with the re-release, like new color decos. Um, there's a lot of good toy product from those years. Uh, just not so much the packaging. Right. So anyway, I, I think I'm just going to try to keep myself focused 82 to 94 and just keep burrowing deeper into 82 to 94. Now, um, now some of that stuff, do, do you own everything personally that's on 3D Joe's or is some of that sent into you, you document right. it, you send it back or how does that work? Right. Well, like just so, so like what you did with the with the training set. I think initially we were thinking I was going to send that back to you. I ended up buying it from. Right. Facebook. Right. I went. Ah, you already opened it. And it was it was a fun story. Uh, off on yeah. a tangent. It was literally I post. I got it at a um, at a toy show because I'm walking around with the GI Joe's shirt. And a guy goes, flags me down. He was a 12 inch collector, you know the old school ones. And he goes, oh, do you like those little garbage, the little tiny GI Joes? And I said, yeah. And he pulls out three mint on cards, an 83 zap, a weapons nice. accessory kit, and some other, a third one I can't remember, mint on card. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I don't want these. He didn't care about them. And I, so I bought them for a good price. And he's like, I got this train set too. And I went, oh yeah. my God, a GI Joe train set, sealed. I started posting pictures. People were like, yeah. hey, you know, told me about you. I was researching the site. And I was like, man, this, this is awesome. But initially yeah. it was, Hey, I'm a crazy man for letting, you know, you open this mint and, you know, it diminishes the value, but I didn't care about that. It wasn't about the money. It was about documenting a very special event, which you're, again, you're going to see at the end. And, and then at the end, you're ready to send it back to me. And I said, ah, here, I, I paid this much. Just buy it. Just keep it. I don't want to pay for the ship or we don't want to deal with the shipping or whatever. I'll tell you, man, I, you know, I got some. Obviously, you always get blowback when you do unboxing videos of vintage stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's people out there that get so upset about it. And number one, it's not your money. Exactly. So, quit complaining. Number two, it's mine. If I want to open it, I'm going to open it. Yeah. My, per my personal rule or my personal guideline is usually if it's worth like a hundred bucks or more, I tend to not open it. Right. But that said, all those figures on 3D Joe's from 1990 to 1994, I bought those mint on card. Ooh. I photographed them mint on card, and then I razored the bubble right off of them yep. and did th 360 spins of them with brand new figures right out of the package. So Perfect. if it's, I mean, if it's it made more sense to me than trying to find a loose, complete version of that figure with no paint scuffing. Like and just, eight just, weapons, you know. Just photograph it, yeah, and then you got the you got the weapons trees with a dozen weapons for yeah. these guys. It's stupid. <laughs> so yeah, I, I photographed it, bent on card, and cut it open, and, and didn't feel the slightest bit of guilt about that. No. Nope. Um, and I know, I know some people just had to have an aneurysm when they saw that. I put all the cards stacked up and then the bubbles just on top of each other <laughs> and put a photo of that out there. And I know that just gave some people an aneurysm. No, and, and I'm on the same page as you because I'll have people get upset at me for opening something. And I'm like, it's mine. You hit the same things that I said. I can do whatever I want with it. I bought it. It makes me happy. I had an Action Force APC that had just, you know, the different art on it. Oh, it was beautiful. It was one of my grails but it had an unused sticker sheet. So people are like, you can't use the sticker sheet. And I'm going, but I want to, I need to put the stickers on this, this freaking APC. And I mean, I got some hate messages. What, what would they rather you do? Buy some reproduction stickers and put those on? Like, I, why would I, you want to put, if you have the option of putting original stickers on your APC versus repro, why would you put repro on there? Right, because they're going, well, there's probably only, you know, a half a dozen left in existence. And I'm like, well, now there's five in existence. I don't now, care. 
I would have been in the camp that, that would have said, I hope you got a 300 DPI scan of that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which, oops, I, I, I didn't. So. <laughs> uh, me. I'm sorry, brother. Uh, but yeah, man, so oh, the message was from you. You were the one yelling at me on that message. Was that me? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm messing with you. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just keep building out the site, man. I, I gotta. I don't want the books to be out of print, so I'm gonna work on. This is a. This might actually be breaking news. I don't think I've said this publicly anywhere, but I've been. I've been talking about it with close friends of mine. Um, what I want to do, the current set is around 450 pages. Yep. I want to I want to flesh that out to maybe 500 pages. There's a lot of stuff on the website where I talk about the artwork, where I find different little things and, and just discuss it. And uh, obviously I've got that friendship with the packaging guy uh, now. Um, he actually came down and went to a Duke basketball game with me a, a month or two ago. Nice! He, he's been a lifelong Duke basketball fan and had never been to Cameron Indoor. So I got some tickets. He came in town for a couple days. We had a great time. So we've got a good friendship. I, I think I'm going to ask him to be involved with the next iteration nice. of the book. I want to add at least 50 pages worth of content, and I want it to be bigger, and I want it to be a coffee table hardcover. So right. just an all-in-one. So instead of the single issues in the double box slipcase, an all-in-one hardcover with an additional 50 pages or, or so of content, and uh, and make a giant coffee table book like GI Joe deserves. Oh wow, so, wow. Well, yeah. Well, um, going back a little bit, and you might have mentioned it before, and I'm an idiot if, if you did. What inspired this? What kicked it off the moment you said, hey, I need to make a site that can 360 go around a figure, and yeah. what was what was your motivation? Because you're, you love G.I. Joe, you're a collector, otherwise you wouldn't be you know doing this kind of thing unless you're right, insane. Right. Yeah, but, no, I've, I've been an addict since I was a kid, right? So this has never changed. My dad, like I said, was a special forces guy back in the 80s. Nice. Um, so he was gone a lot. We grew up on 21 acres in horse country, and just, I, I, I roamed horse country with my toys and set up little battles in the creeks and on the hills and like if a tree fell over you know there'd be a fort underneath oh yeah monster, you know, all that kind of stuff so G.I. Joe was absolutely huge for me as a kid and uh you know I, I put it away when I was 11 years old uh 1990 I put G.I. Joe away and I put toys away and uh and it, you know, I went off to high school. I got really into comic books. I started drawing. I drew six full-length comic books from sixth grade to twelfth grade. Mm. Then I went, I went to design school to pursue illustration, and that's when I segued into video and animation. Um, and then as an adult, I just reconnected with it, man. I was at Target, and there was the Battle in the Box 25th anniversary. You know, giant his tank, Mobat, big yep. set. I got I that. Yeah. On a end cap, and I was like, holy <laughs> shit! I still. GI Joe, yep. and it's better, and, and like the molds were the same, but they did some upgrades to it. You know, it was incredible, man. So it just like it just reignited that passion. That was about 2008, I think. Yep. Um, and I went to my first Joe Con in 2012. Yeah, I kind of met the community, and that was a real eye opener for me. And coincidentally, at the same time, I invested in that Kickstarter for the 360 Arc Spin software and hardware. And so just as soon as that came in. I was like, I know what I want to do with this. I want to do something for G.I. Joe. And again, I, you know, I wasn't setting out to replace Yo Joe, and it never will. Yo Joe is comprehensive and has a much bigger scope. Yeah. Um, but what I wanted to do was just something more focused, more mobile friendly, more just G.I. Joe, a real American hero, and really dive in on the package artwork and the, the print stuff and the books and the magazines and all that kind of stuff and, and do it in a way that you know a graphic designer would do it. Yeah. So uh, it's just been a lifelong passion, man. I think it started really though after Joe Con, like after meeting the community and coming back and, and that uh, Kickstarter had gone through and that stuff, or the hardware arrived at my house. There was no question in my mind, no hesitation of what I wanted to do with it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that's that's phenomenal. And then you went, okay, I want to preserve this. Um, but here's kind of a morbid question. What wow. happens if you go away? I mean, you die in a car accident tomorrow. Dude, I've thought that more than once, man. So uh, my sister uh, helps me out 20 hours a week. And my accounts, like all of my login stuff is with her. Yep. <laughs> so, um, I, hey, I'll go on the record right here as saying, I would love for the people that have helped me the most to pick up that torch and carry that shit. Right. So if it's, if it's Chad that's helped me with the books, doing all the Photoshop restoration, or my buddy Tim that's traveled down from Chicago multiple times just to work on the site, like I want those guys to have it. Right. You know? And I, I want them to continue building it. Oh, okay. yeah. 
it's not you're, you're talking about what's called the digital afterlife mm -hmm. what happened to you and all of your efforts after you pass and that's something everybody should be thinking about you know a so, absolutely because okay. my, my thoughts my, my thoughts and the reason I even brought it up was you know these YouTube videos I don't have to do anything I, I post it it'll be there for you know theoretically forever my grandkids can make fun of me my great 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 kids hey look at it. it's uh, grandpa grandpa curry doing it but with your with your thing you have a monthly fee so if that fee doesn't get you know uh, reestablished it just boop, disappears so that was my yeah, that was my fear. So having somebody a plan got, in place. Somebody got to pay the bills. You're absolutely right, man. Somebody, if, to keep the lights on, they're going to have to pay the bills. And so, you know, my hope for that is that they wouldn't have to resort to advertising. Yeah. Just because the mission from day one is to try to keep it simple, keep it, you know, uncluttered. Um, so I, I really, really hope that, you know, whoever takes it over would be able to honor that. And, and that hopefully they can do that by printing more books or yep. doing whatever. Like just come up with some, some other way to try yeah. to pay for it. And, and that's cool that, that you said that. I didn't realize that because, you know, we're so accustomed to ads. Sometimes I'm not, uh, you know, looking for them. But most sites you go to these days, you're bombarded with ads. But now I'm thinking about it, I've, you never said it out loud, I'm going, yeah, there are no ads at 3D Joe's, which is awesome, you know, because when I started this YouTube channel several years ago, I go, I don't want to have commercials. You know, I have to skip commercials, so that was kind of my thing, where I go, I'm not going to have no commercials in there, and people are like, but you can make money, you can make money, and I go, I don't want people thinking I'm doing this for money. I don't want to clutter it up for with commercials. So that was kind of my mission statement in the beginning and as you know my youtube grows and blossoms and and that's fine people are oh well, do it now do it now i'm like no i'm not freaking putting commercials in here i don't want to i don't care if it i can make money off of it so it's, awesome. it's cool to hear you say that too because i didn't realize that yeah I, I just you know i wanted it to be mobile friendly and most traffic the majority of traffic is coming from mobile now so yep. it, it was it was a consideration for me from day one yeah how, how do you personally because i can see a little snippet of behind you how do you personally display your collection are you an all in totes guy do you have stuff in cabinets or how do you do it <laughs> have you not have you not seen my toys r us oh my god that's i still have seen the duh can you show me that's right it's right downstairs man oh my gosh yes yeah. he bought out all these toys r us displays when toys r us went belly up and yeah. made his own toys r us in your basement yeah. That's for, I, I totally forgot about that. You know, I'm <laughs> uh, there was a guy here putting a security camera in there down downstairs for me, and uh, I did a Facebook Live video and I posted it on YouTube, so you can grab that too and throw it in. Oh, here cool! If you like it. But uh, but yeah, man, it's a uh, it's a Toys R Us. I have I've had about 450 square feet down there, and it was just this terrible, nasty storage space, you know. And so I, I just totally refinished it, gutted the whole thing, tore out all these like crappy wood shelves that were in there, yep. uh, refinished it with like a garage epoxy, sealed the whole place, and then put in, I think it, it's around $450 worth of uh, Toys R Us fixtures in there. Yep. And I've got uh, 32 feet of displayable store shelving, and then I've got like three or four islands down there. And basically, I had three U-Haul storage units at one point that has my collection swell. Oh, wow. And, uh, this is the first time that I've been able to put all of the mint on card figures on display, all the vehicle boxes. I'm in heaven, man. It's yeah. absolutely perfect. That's my happy place. Cause you know, we have stresses with family and, and work and real life situations. And you yep. know, people go, why do you do this? And I didn't think about the motivations of collecting in the beginning. I was just diving right. into it. But as years and years go on, I'm going, why do I do this? And you know, it's just a simple, tapping into that nostalgia, the community, um, simpler yep. times, and yep. and going, you know what? This is my kind of escape. And then giving back. Like you have the website. My yep. my thrills don't come from flipping things online or making money or anything. That's, that's empty. My thrills come from showing this, sharing my passion, showing yep. other people's collections, other people's websites. That's why I'm doing this with Carson right now. I like to share this whole thing with the world, and that's that's what my my passion is really with with the toys. Because owning something, yeah, it's fun. It's great having having this, but you know, 
happiness is with the friends and, and, and making memories and sharing that, not just hoarding it and going, this is mine. I'm not going to sh- tell anybody about this or show anybody this. No. I'll, I'll tell you by far the most rewarding part of this hobby beyond the long-term friendships that I've made is, is just little pieces, little anecdotes of feedback that I get about the website. Yes. Um, it, it's amazing, man. I, I know people don't think a lot of times these days just to reach out and say thank you you know what i mean but some people do and it means so much absolutely when they do, man they're like hey just want to send you a message i just discovered your site and spent three hours there it's freaking incredible you know like stuff like that yes that's fuel that's fuel in the tank man absolutely like, everybody wants to feel like they have some purpose in life or like they're contributing something of value or of meaning to the world mm-hmm. and three of those like by far has helped me connect with thousands of people man so that's yep. been incredible it's uh we're coming up on five million page views from 1.15 million unique viewers um so when people say like gi joe's dead no gi joe's not dead three joe started six years ago and over a million people have visited you know what i mean that's impressive it's, that's so cool it, they're just not monetizing it right now. They haven't tapped into, I guess they need a new audience because us collectors aren't enough. You know, I've heard that several times, but G.I. Joe is far from dead. Like so many people are still incredibly interested in it. Yep. Every time I've done a Kickstarter, the, the number of people backing it has grown. Um, I think I started around 260 and maybe the last one was, was 420 people that got behind the vision and threw money behind it. So. There's no doubt, you know, my, my email list of people that have bought from the website, uh, I think it's at like 2,100 people now. Wow. Over, that have bought a book or a poster. So that's that's not just people that are interested. That's people that are willing to, to trust a relative unknown, being me, to buy something that's G.I. Joe related. You yeah. Know, that's, that's like a, a small sample size of this audience. So I mean, there's, there's a ton of people out there that love this stuff. And, you know, I think we're all, you know, looking for a way to connect with one another with this kind of digital fractured world that we live in, you know, attention deficit disorder, everybody's right. just scrolling their lives away. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're all looking for something real to kind of connect with. And I've definitely found that with some of the community folks that I've met. Yeah. I mean, you're speaking my language. I mean, I, I haven't thought about it that deep. I'm like, yes, that's exactly, that's exactly how I feel. And I've met so many positive, fun people and then their wives become friends with my wife's and our kids play together and it's all over the toys you know the toys that we have the similar interests and yeah it's a little it's not as mainstream as maybe sports or you know shoes or autograph collections or or whatnot and thank god thank god man i mean look i love pro football i love college basketball but I'm not going to connect with anybody on a deep level about the Carolina Panthers. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. This is not, it's not going to happen. And you don't have that same, like with G.I. Joe, almost all of us can be these archaeologists that are digging for information and comparing right. variants and, you know, getting to know different people. It's just, we can all kind of find something. You could be a toy photographer that takes amazing, beautiful photos, or you could be a podcaster, or you could be a costumer that's recreating these figures in real life form. There's so many different ways that people express their love for it and Absolutely. find their, their, their own little sense of purpose in the community within this hobby. Yep. And so, I don't know, man, I, I think it I think it brings joy to countless people. I really do. I, I heard you on a, not, not to go, uh, I promised myself I wasn't going to bring this up, but I'm going to because you mentioned it. Okay. Podcasting. I heard you on a podcast a year or uh, so, a couple years ago, My Wife Is Gonna Kill Me podcast. Do you remember that at all? Yeah. Um, and tra- and Travis was talking about your turnstile, or I don't know if the turntable where you put it on there, and you said how you got a larger one, because originally it was, I think, the smaller one for the figures, then you got a bigger one for the boxes or something, and then he yep. was trying to convince you so he could come over naked and sit on it and go around, and I'm like, oh my God, what the... <laughs> it's... Bring, out, bring out the sterilizing wipes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no, so so I did get this motorized Lazy Susan. It's about two and a half feet across, and it'll support I think 250 pounds. So well, he I can't sit on it then. He's he's way over that, so you're good. Oh uh, really? Yeah. He's gonna break. He would break um, it. But I did use it for work. So one of my clients is Duke University, and uh, they've got a crazy basketball student population called the Cameron Crazies. And uh, I actually took it before a game, set up next to the the gym there, um, Cameron Indoor and did motorized 360s of these students in their attire 
and we did like a monthly thing where you had interactive spins of these different uh, camera crazies. So I've actually used it with real people, and it does work. Wow, that's that's really neat. Holy crap! Well, so, let me think. Uh, I think I hit everything that I wanted to talk to you about with the posters okay. and the 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 backstories and the offshoot mm -hmm. tangents. We could literally again talk for several hours and just go on and on. But I can hear my kids crying in the in the background, so no I'm worries. going to bid adieu. Thanks again for being with me. Uh, check out 3D Joe's, 3djoes.com. Get lost in it because you're gonna you're gonna love it. You're gonna thank me. Comment below what you liked about the site. Shoot messages to him. If you liked it, if it reignited some type of passion, uh, a positive message goes a long way. I have people that you know send me messages sometimes and go, oh, you know, our kids and I started watching it. Now it's it sparked into this bond or, or, or whatnot, and it feels good. It makes me go, you know what? People are watching this. People are enjoying what I'm doing, and it, it gives me that fuel to continue doing what we do in our in our art forms. Uh, Justice, I wanted to take the opportunity, since you've got quite a good uh, YouTube audience that you're building, to plug what I think is the single most worthwhile or valuable YouTube video that I've been able to put together. Um, the brand manager, Kirk Bazigian, managed the video shoot for the television commercials for the first live action G.I. Joe television commercials. Yes. He, he was there for two weeks in Vancouver while they were filming in December of 1990. He recorded on a high, like a handheld, handy cam, uh, home camera, two, like for two weeks, he recorded three tapes. And he didn't even look at these from 1990 until 2018. Yep. And he met me and was like, okay, You've got the passion and you're qualified to do it. I'm mailing you the tapes. Make something out of it and we'll put together a GI Joe panel uh, at the last Joe Con. And so that's what we did. Um, I would love for uh, if you could put a link into it. Or Absolutely. A for, for, for in the action. description. So the check out the live action uh, GI Joe commercials. Fresh from the tapes, you get to see behind the scenes of what Kirk Bazigian filmed while they were filming at these studios in Vancouver. It's just riveting content I, and I, I feel I, incredible incredibly honored that he trusted me with that with those tapes yep yep and i personally watched all of them how many there's a few different episodes like what six we'll ten, you, I don't can watch, you can watch the joe con panel yep. which is me basically presenting these interwoven clips that i put together and then asking kirk about those so it's like it's peppered with here's unseen footage and then here's kirk talking about it and then here's unseen footage and here's kirk talking about it um, so you can watch that, but there's also like an unedited, or an edited, but it's just behind the scene footage for like 45 minutes. Yes. I mean, if you just, if you want to go on a deep dive of what it was like on a movie stage, I watched it. I watched it. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah, you, you can watch that stuff. And then the final thing is there's just new masters of those actual commercials. Mm -hmm. So you had these uh, DVD masters of it. Um, one of them was pulled from the air because Hasbro was sued by the FCC or whatever because they basically showed the battle copter taken off in a way that it would never really take off. They used <laughs> fish and wire and they were like moving the, the battle copter and it was, it was totally illegal and misrepresentation. Yep. So that commercial was pulled from the airwaves and they were sued over it. And uh, so that commercial is like impossible to find on YouTube. Of course. But we had behind the scenes footage of it. And I was like, what the hell? I went out in the community and was like, where the hell is the commercial with Major Altitude and Interrogator, you know? Yep. And so Adam Rich is the illustrator that does the card art for the Joe Club figures, as well as plenty of other comic book covers and that kind of thing. He's a professional working artist. Um, he remembered seeing it as a kid and they taped everything. Oh, so he yes. Has he went and scoured his VHS tapes. He found the missing commercial. We presented it at Joe Con, and now it's up on YouTube. Nice. So it was, that's the archiving thing that I'm talking about. Those are the moments where you're like, man, I just brought something to the community that, that wasn't there before. Yes. And that's an, that's an amazing moment, you know, to contribute in some way something that had, was heretofore undiscovered. Absolutely. So, yeah, it was a ton of fun, man. I, I definitely, if you could link to that video so everybody could check it out, yep. I'd appreciate it, man. Yep, I'm going to have multiple links in my description. I'll obviously have one for 3D Joe's, but it's pretty easy. It's just three, the letter D, and then Joe's, J-O-E-S dot com. And you can find it, but I'll still put a link in there as well as links to the um, the train set unboxing, which is hilarious. You'll watch that, I'm, again, put a little clip on there. And then some links to those commercials with some never before seen footage as well behind the scenes. They're very entertaining, they're cool, you're gonna enjoy them. So thank you, Carson. I'll send you your, uh, your check in the mail here, your $10,000 <laughs> studio fee, but uh, 
tonight. Yes. Oh, cool. Thanks again. I appreciate you having me, man. It's been a long time coming, so I'm glad we were able to sit down and do it. Absolutely. All right. Yo, Joe, guys. Take care. Yo, Joe. Woo! Of course. All right, so we're here with an electric train set from Justin Carey. Really, really cool. Justin sent this to me. Um, I photographed the box exterior, and then he, he thought about it for a day and wrote me and said, no, man, you need to open it up and document the whole thing before you send it back. Don't just shoot the box. So that's what we're going to do right now. It's kind of crazy. Um, and so this thing's been sealed for this thing over sealed 30 up, years. Sealed up since 1984. Uh, it was available in the Sears catalog. There was an electric truck set as well as an electric train set. So this is the electric train set available through the Sears catalog in 1984. I mean, the box is just ridiculously, it's in great shape. Yeah, it's its almost... Uh, There's hardly any blemishes on this thing. It's almost a shame to actually break it open, but... Uh, but hey. Justin's going to feel bad if we don't. Well, so. and hey, it's all about the toy inside. No, seriously, man, Justin, can't thank you enough, man. Really appreciate it. This so, a, we're going to yeah. crack it open and document the heck out of it. I'm going to shoot all the little trains and all the little people and everything. All right. So, what do you think the best way to attack this thing is? Without uh, Is it taped or is it glued? It's glued. Along wow. The side. You know use as few parts and as, as little materials as you have to to make the biggest footprint so wow interesting like put this hair right here so yeah. we got the uh the battery whatever the heck you call that thing got a bunch of train tracks got a bunch of little tanks there you got your uh gi joe green and your cobra blue tank as you can see over here they oh, have yeah. some really cool gi joe and cobra um parachutes right right unfortunately so we, just... we don't have those so unfortunately, uh, uh, at the time this set was packed, we have a little note. Oh my God! It says "Oops" at the top. Um, oops. But at the time this set was packed, we were out of stock on parachutes. Please call our toll-free number. <laughs> New Jersey residents call toll-free. So rest assured, we will be calling this number and they're to get them. our parachutes. They're gonna mail them to us. They they are thirty. Back. So but, our, uh, our apparently G.I. Joe had to borrow a, a <laughs> car from forces. Special Forces because That's right. Yeah. And they didn't give us any stickers for that one either. They didn't give us stickers yeah. for it and it's already been it's already decaled. Pre done, so So uh yeah, our two big disappointments. Aha. Uh -huh. We switch to the other side of the production. Uh -oh. And we have Carson with a working train. All right. So it's got a, uh, you know, you can go from zero to a hundred percent, and uh, you can also do forward and reverse. You can see the, the trains are already getting derailed, though, man. Yeah, you definitely have to find the balance of speed. <laughs> kind of. All right, Joe, give it a tap, man. I've got it up to a hundred, so it's gonna it's gonna take off once it gets going, and then it's gonna derail. Oh shit, turn it down. Alright. See the little headlight on it? I believe 30 years later, this thing is still fully functional. And uh, I wouldn't have had this experience without Justin, aka Justice Carey, sending it to us. So I appreciate it. It'll be on 3D Joe's here in a little bit. Yo, Joe. Yo, Joe. All right, so last thing we're going to do tonight is call about those parachutes because we want our parachutes. Yeah. So let's see. Um, we're not in New Jersey, so we're going to dial the 1-800. 1-800-257. Hello? Yeah, so you can call from home. 1-800-257-77. Hey guys, I purposely left that as a cliffhanger to find out what happens when Carson calls that number. You will be shocked and awed. 
but click on uh, my description. There's some links in there, one of which is a direct link to Carson's YouTube video with that. You can check it out. Please go to 3D Joe's. As you can see, you're going to love it. You're going to absolutely love it. Also, if you're a fan of mine, you want to be part of the adventure and contribute, check out my Patreon page. If you don't know what a Patreon page is, it's kind of a portal for you to get involved. There's some amazing perks. Um, and it's just giving a few bucks to finance this whole thing, this adventure. I mean, if you break it down, I'm like Carson. I probably make 23 cents an hour doing this, and I don't care about the money. But every little bit helps with the hours and hours I spend editing. And you might win gold bars, Lamborghinis, helicopter rides, and none of which I just said is correct. But there are some serious cool perks. Um, so check out Patreon, 3D Joe's, YouTube. You collect how you collect which makes no sense, but I love you. You guys have a wonderful day. God bless. Take care. Bye. Hey guys, Justice Curry here. I have children, so they're gonna. I only have a few precious seconds. What I want to talk to you is these amazing Justice Curry shirts. Yes, available in all sizes, shapes, colors. My buddy uh, Motu Joe has a website called Retro Rags Limited. Um, he put these shirts on there. Why they're special is because I like them. They're awesome. It's low light riding battle cat, but 100% of the proceeds go to charity. I don't make a dime. He don't make a dime. I just thought it was a cool thing and a way to plug his website, which has also amazing, amazing shirts like the one I'm wearing now. A lot of He-Man, G.I. Joe designs. He'll take vintage patches, put them on hats. You name it, he's there. So check out my description. Uh, there's a link to it. Retro Rags Limited. Take care, guys. Love you all.